Welcome to another episode where we explore the fascinating world of food, answering your most pressing questions. Today, we're on a mission to unravel the mysteries of your favorite foods and their quirkiest attributes. Ever wondered why honey never goes bad? Or why Swiss cheese is full of holes? Perhaps you've questioned why bread dries out but biscuits turn soft. From the science behind brain freeze to the curious case of seedless grapes reproduction, we've got all your biggest food questions covered. Today, we'll journey through the enigmatic realm of food science, exploring the answers to these questions and many more. The answers may surprise you, delight you, or even make you look at your food in a whole new light. Strap in and get ready for a culinary journey of discovery. Ever wondered why honey never goes bad? Well, it's a fascinating story involving bees, nectar, and a bit of chemistry. Honey's secret lies in its natural preservative properties. The bees play an integral part in this process. They collect nectar, a sweet liquid inside flowers, and store it in their honey stomach. Once they return to the hive, they pass the nectar to other bees through regurgitation. These bees then evaporate the excess water from the nectar by fanning their wings, creating a thick syrup, the honey. The low water content and acidic pH of honey make it inhospitable for bacteria and microorganisms, allowing it to last indefinitely. So the next time you drizzle honey on your toast, remember the amazing nature of this sweet treat. Have you ever pondered why cut apples go brown? When you cut an apple, it starts to turn brown because of a natural process called enzymatic browning. The apple contains certain enzymes and when you cut it, these enzymes react with the air. This reaction causes the apple to change color due to the formation of brown pigments. It's like a rusting process, but with apples. Although the browning doesn't make the apple bad to eat, it doesn't look as appetizing. Luckily, you can slow down this browning by doing things like putting lemon juice on the cut surface or keeping the cut apple in the fridge. So next time your apple slices turn brown, just remember it's a natural reaction and there are simple tricks to keep them looking fresh. When you observe that bananas seem to hasten the ripening of nearby fruits, it's not a mysterious phenomenon, but rather a result of ethene gas. As bananas ripen, they emit ethene, a natural plant hormone. This ethene acts as a signaling molecule, influencing the ripening process in other fruits. By triggering the production of enzymes and hormones responsible for ripening, ethene essentially sets off a chain reaction, accelerating the maturation of neighboring fruits. It's a remarkable example of nature's interconnected processes, showcasing how one fruit's ripening can influence the entire fruit bowl. Now, let's crack the case of the gray ring around hard-boiled egg yolks. Overcooking is the culprit here. When eggs are boiled for an extended period, the sulfur compounds in the egg white engage in a reaction with the iron compounds in the yolk. This chemical interaction produces a grayish discoloration near the surface of the yolk, detracting from the visual appeal of the egg. To avoid encountering this unappetizing ring, it's essential to hone your egg boiling skills by adjusting cooking times and ensuring that the eggs are not boiled excessively. Mastering the art of perfect hard-boiled eggs lies in finding that delicate balance in cooking duration. Speaking of hard-boiled eggs, ever wondered why they sometimes smell so bad? Overcooking strikes again. When eggs are boiled for an extended period, sulfur-containing compounds in the egg white undergo a reaction that releases hydrogen sulfide gas. This gas, notorious for its characteristic rotten egg smell, is the source of the offensive odor. So, if you've ever experienced an unwelcome stench while preparing hard-boiled eggs, it's a clear signal to adjust your cooking time and prevent the release of hydrogen sulfide. Shifting our attention to the kitchen, let's uncover the mystery of the white substance often observed when cooking salmon. This substance is merely coagulated protein, specifically albumin, which emerges as the salmon cooks. While it's not harmful, its appearance can serve as a signal to fine-tune your cooking method. Adjusting factors such as cooking temperature and time can help minimize the release of albumin and enhance the overall texture of your salmon dish. Moving on to the world of cured meats, ever wondered why months-old air-dried ham stays safe while fresh meat goes off in a few days? The secret lies in a meticulous process involving moisture removal and the powerful preservative nature of salt. By eliminating moisture, the environment becomes inhospitable to bacteria, thwarting their ability to cause spoilage. Additionally, the salt content acts as a natural preservative, 
further safeguarding the ham from microbial degradation. The science behind the artful preservation of ham unlocks the secrets of its prolonged shelf life. Unraveling the mystery of why bread tends to dry out while biscuits stay soft, the critical factor at play is moisture content. Bread, with its higher moisture content, is susceptible to evaporation, leading to a drier texture over time. On the flip side, biscuits often include fats in their recipe, acting as moisture retainers and contributing to their enduring softness. It's a battle of moisture dynamics, setting the stage for a crispy versus fluffy showdown in the world of baked goods. Understanding these principles can empower bakers to manipulate ingredients and processes, achieving the desired texture in their culinary creations. Let's talk mushrooms. Have you ever contemplated why they maintain their firm texture rather than turning into mush during cooking? The secret lies in the robust cell walls of mushrooms, which withstand the heat and retain their structure. This unique cellular resilience not only preserves the integrity of the mushrooms, but also contributes to the delightful and firm texture that makes them a culinary favorite. Explore the science behind the resilience of mushrooms in the face of cooking temperatures during this journey into the kitchen. Shifting gears to health, how does salt increase blood pressure? Consuming high amounts of salt can result in water retention, causing an increase in blood volume. This elevated blood volume exerts more pressure on blood vessels, contributing to a rise in blood pressure. The intricate relationship between salt intake and its impact on cardiovascular health is a crucial aspect to understand. Acknowledging the effects of salt on your overall well-being is important. Seedless grapes. How do they reproduce? Well, the answer lies not in magic, but in the art of selective breeding. Seedless grape varieties are intentionally bred to be sterile, a result of careful genetic manipulation. The propagation of these grapes is achieved through methods such as cutting or grafting, allowing growers to reproduce these desirable traits. Unveiling Mother Nature's little secret, the creation of seedless grapes is a testament to human intervention and the ingenuity of agricultural practices in shaping the fruits we enjoy today. Ever notice that hot and cold water sound different when poured into a glass? The answer lies in the concepts of viscosity and density. Hot water, being less viscous, flows with a different fluidity, creating a unique sound compared to the denser and more viscous cold water. The symphony of pouring water unveils a fascinating auditory experience shaped by the physical properties of temperature and fluid dynamics. So, the next time you fill a glass, listen closely to the subtle yet distinctive notes in the orchestra of pouring water. Are canned tomatoes healthier than fresh ones? It's a common question in the kitchen. Fresh tomatoes boast rich nutrient content, but surprisingly, canned tomatoes can be just as nutritious. The canning process might even enhance certain antioxidants in tomatoes. Ultimately, the choice between fresh and canned tomatoes often depends on personal preference and the specific nutritional requirements of your recipe. Both options offer their own set of benefits and understanding the nuances can help you make informed decisions based on your culinary needs and preferences. Here's a cheesy question. Can you eat moldy cheese? Well, the answer isn't a straightforward yes or no. Certain cheeses, such as blue cheese, intentionally incorporate mold as part of their production process and are safe to eat. However, for the majority of cheeses, encountering mold is an indication to exercise caution. It's generally advisable to trim off the moldy portions to mitigate potential health risks associated with consuming harmful molds. So when faced with a block of cheese showcasing unexpected mold, the prudent course is a bit of careful trimming to savor the rest of your cheesy delight safely. Have you ever wondered about the liquid on top of yogurt? Well, wonder no more, it's whey. This protein-rich liquid naturally separates from yogurt over time. Contrary to concerns, it's entirely safe to consume. In fact, you can play a part in customizing your yogurt experience if you fancy a creamier texture, simply give it a good stir to incorporate the whey back in. On the other hand, if you prefer a thicker consistency, you can opt to pour off the liquid. So, whether you're a stirrer or a pourer, the choice is yours to tailor your yogurt just the way you like it. Moving on to the science of cooking. How do microwaves cook food? 
Microwaves operate by emitting electromagnetic waves that specifically target water molecules present in the food. When these waves interact with water molecules, they generate excitement among them, leading to the production of heat. This heat permeates the food, swiftly and efficiently cooking it. It's a process that might seem magical, but in reality, it's a fascinating application of scientific principles, turning your microwave into a culinary wizard in your kitchen. If you're a coffee lover, you might have noticed that skimmed milk makes more froth than whole milk. Ever wondered why? Let's take a dive into the science behind this frothy phenomenon. You see, the process of frothing milk is all about incorporating air into the milk, creating thousands of tiny bubbles. The proteins in milk are key players in this process. When you steam milk, the proteins uncurl and bond with each other, forming a network that traps and stabilizes the air bubbles. Now, where does the fat come in? Well, milk fat tends to destabilize the protein network, disrupting the formation and stability of the bubbles. Skimmed milk, with its lower fat content, allows for a stronger, more stable protein network, which in turn leads to more froth. Whole milk, on the other hand, with its higher fat content, produces a creamier, richer froth, but less of it. So it all boils down to your personal preference. So, if you prefer a fluffier cappuccino, skimmed milk might be your best bet. Ever wondered why sausages are affectionately called bangers by the British? The origin traces back to World War II, when sausages affected by rationing had a higher water content. As a result, the excess moisture in these sausages led to a distinctive sizzling and popping sound when cooked in a pan. This unique auditory feature earned them the endearing nickname, bangers. The term persisted through the years, becoming a part of British culinary culture, and now you know the sizzling history behind why sausages are fondly referred to as bangers. Addressing a common kitchen concern, the question arises, can you still cook minced beef if it's gone brown? The answer is a resounding yes. The browning effect is merely a consequence of oxidation, not an indication of spoilage. As long as the meat doesn't exhibit a foul odor or possess a slimy texture, it remains safe to cook and enjoy. Understanding that the color change is a natural process allows you to confidently use slightly browned minced beef in your culinary creations, ensuring both safety and deliciousness on your plate. Swiss cheese is famous for its distinctive holes, but what causes them? The answer lies within the art of cheesemaking. It's all about the fermentation process. When cheese is made, bacteria are added to the milk to start the fermentation process. The bacteria eat the lactose in the milk and as a byproduct, they produce carbon dioxide gas. Now, in most cheeses, this gas is released. But in Swiss cheese, the gas gets trapped. This is because Swiss cheese is made at a lower temperature and the process is slower, allowing the gas to form bubbles within the cheese. As the cheese hardens, these bubbles become the holes we all know and love. These holes, or eyes, are an important part of Swiss cheese's identity. They affect not just the look, but also the texture and even the flavor. The size and number of the holes can even give us clues about the quality of the cheese. So, those holes are actually a sign of a well-made Swiss cheese. Turning attention to bacon's nitrates, it's crucial to acknowledge their potential link to cancer risk. Cooking bacon can convert nitrates into nitrosamines associated with cancer. Opting for lower nitrate or nitrite-free bacon and a balanced diet can help reduce these risks. Emphasizing informed dietary choices promotes well-being while enjoying occasional bacon treats. Regarding nitrates in beets, spinach, and carrots, they are deemed healthy due to potential benefits like improved blood flow and lower blood pressure. In contrast to risks in processed meats, these plant-based nitrates are advantageous in a balanced diet. Understanding the source and context is crucial, highlighting the difference between natural vegetable nitrates and those in processed meats. We've all experienced that sudden headache after eating something cold too quickly. But what exactly is a brain freeze? Also known as sphenopalatine ganglioneuralgia, a brain freeze occurs when something cold touches the roof of your mouth, where there are a lot of nerve endings. This sudden temperature change causes blood vessels in the roof of your mouth to rapidly constrict and then dilate. This reaction sends a message to your brain which it interprets as a sharp pain in your forehead. It's your body's way of telling you to slow down and not to freeze your brain. Interestingly, 
this same mechanism is thought to be involved in migraines, which could explain why some people are more prone to brain freezes than others. And while brain freezes can be uncomfortable, they're not harmful and usually pass within a few seconds or minutes. So, next time you're enjoying a cold treat, remember to take it slow to avoid the dreaded brain freeze. Onions making you cry? Blame it on the enzymes. When onions are cut, enzymes come into play, breaking down sulfur compounds and releasing irritating substances that induce tear production. The science behind this eye-watering phenomenon is intriguing. However, fear not, as tear-free cutting tips are at your disposal to ease your worries and make your onion chopping experience a more pleasant one. Baking soda and baking powder, both essential leavening agents in baking, differ in their roles. Baking soda, or sodium bicarbonate, requires an acid to react and create carbon dioxide for leavening. Without sufficient acid, a metallic taste may result. On the other hand, baking powder, a blend of baking soda and acid, is a self-contained leavening agent suitable for recipes lacking natural acids. Its use is common in recipes with neutral ingredients. Although they may appear similar, these ingredients play distinct roles in baking, contributing unique chemical reactions to texture, rise, and flavor in your favorite treats. Time for a spice mystery. Is it true that nutmeg is a mind-altering drug? Yes, nutmeg contains myristicin, which in large quantities can have psychoactive effects. However, it's crucial to note that the typical amounts used in culinary applications won't lead to mind-altering experiences. So while nutmeg possesses an interesting chemical profile, there's no need for concern when enjoying it in the moderate quantities commonly used in your favorite recipes. Stick to the culinary realm, and the delightful flavors of nutmeg will enhance your dishes without any unexpected effects. Have you ever pondered the peculiar phenomenon of asparagus causing your urine to smell funny? The culprit here lies in sulfur-containing compounds within asparagus that undergo breakdown during digestion, resulting in a distinct odor. The good news is that it's entirely normal and harmless. Consider it just another quirky aspect of indulging in the deliciousness of asparagus. So next time you notice the unique aroma, rest assured that it's a natural occurrence and part of the fascinating journey of enjoying this green vegetable. Lastly, let's talk about prawns. Why do they turn pink when cooked? Well, it's a captivating tale of chemistry at play. Prawns harbor astaxanthin, a pigment initially concealed by other pigments. However, when subjected to heat during the cooking process, these masking pigments break down, unveiling the stunning pink color we all associate with perfectly cooked prawns. It's a culinary spectacle where science meets the plate, adding an extra layer of appreciation to your delicious seafood experience. Today's exploration took us through intriguing food questions, unveiling the secrets of everlasting honey, deciphering the science behind skimmed milk froth, demystifying the Swiss cheese mysteries, and distinguishing between baking soda and baking powder. From the enigma of brain freeze to the captivating world of culinary science, we hope you've enjoyed this culinary journey and that we've answered some of your biggest food questions. Remember, every meal, every ingredient, carries with it a story, a question waiting to be answered. This is the beauty of food. It's more than just sustenance. It's a constant journey of discovery, a delicious way to satisfy not just our hunger, but our curiosity as well. Until next time, keep exploring the wonderful world of food.